And it's had poison. Poisons are a species of crystalline extraterrestrials spawned by the Poison Queen. Originating on Earth 17952, the poison spends an unknown amount of time as prey for larger, stronger creatures before discovering that they could assimilate symbiotes and their hosts to become more powerful. Poison Captain Marvel was the poison who assimilated venomized Captain Marvel of Earth 81622. Poison Captain Marvel attacked D Man and Rage on Manhattan Bridge alongside Poison Killer Thrill, Poison Hyperion. Poison Gamora and Poison Thing in order to attract more powerful heroes. <laughs> Kind of a burn. This attack led to the creation of Poison D Man, Poison Rage, and Poison Thor. However, this poison most likely died along with the others when the Queen was killed by the time displaced Jean Grey. And at 9, Imposter. Part of a training program with the intent of eventually replacing Earth's heroes, this scroll was permanently turned into a copy of the Kree warrior Marvel to avoid any possible detection. However, a problem emerged when the real Marvel died. So this scroll was no longer useful in the training program, and he couldn't really return to his true form, preventing him from returning to his normal life. However, he wasn't just going to lie down and die, so the scroll allied himself with two other scrolls in the same situation, posing as the deceased heroes of John Proudstar and Adam Warlock. After some time, they had a run-in with Kitty Pride, who they mistook for her scroll imposter and then took prisoner. But realizing that she was the real deal and that Galactus was about to arrive, they let her go and joined forces with her and Wolverine in an attempt to save their people and the X-Men. The Skrull was ultimately gunned down by another Skrull when he attempted to stop a Skrull general from keeping people from getting on board a spaceship. I'm guessing to evacuate. And it ate Rogue. When Rogue touched Ms. Marvel to absorb her powers, Carol grabbed onto her arm and didn't let go. So in addition to Carol's Kree DNA glitching up Rogue's powers, the prolonged contact caused each to end up absorbing the powers, memories, and personality of the others. They kind of swapped places. Rogue sought out Professor X's help, and afterwards she was sent to space as a consequence of an encounter with Brood. Rogue and Carol Danvers were briefly visited by Carol's counterpart from the Prime Marvel Universe using the powers of the Reality Stone, since the gem links her to the other wielders of the gem and other realities, and they can all kind of like communicate, with the wielder of this Earth being Anna Marie. They talked about the differences between their lines before the visiting Carol was pulled to Earth 70875. But yeah, Rogue having. Carol Danvers' powers, that's actually pretty weird. At number seven is that Kamala Khan is herself a huge superhero fan and a lover of fan fiction. In fact, the first time we ever see Kamala in issue one of her self-titled comic book series, she's actually in the middle of writing a fanfic when her mom interrupts her for dinner. This isn't the only time this part of her character shines through though. She continues to be starstruck when coming in contact with other superheroes as her career picks up. In one instance, she meets Wolverine and doesn't hold back from divulging that her Wolverine and Storm in Space fanfic was the third most upvoted story on a popular fanfic site. This side of Miss Marvel is really refreshing and fun because it just shows Miss Marvel having all her wildest dreams come true. From this first encounter with Wolverine to her eventual induction into the Avengers, her excitement persists throughout her character's arc. And let's not forget that her name derives from her love for Carol Danvers and her old moniker of Miss Marvel. A whole lot of her identity is built on her super fandom, and we love it. And at 6, AI Avengers. This android-based Captain Marvel was one of the many robotic versions of the Avengers created by Raz Maltra, which were in turn inspired by Egghead and his AI Avengers. They were dispatched to fight off the Hulk and the forces of Hydra at the Mount, but were ultimately destroyed. But I mean, like, come on. An AI version of Captain Marvel is pretty weird, but honestly, based on what I talk about on Top 10 Gaming, it's par for the course for me. Number 5. Police Lieutenant. Well, in the MCU, we have been introduced to an adult, Monica, who has her eyes on the stars and was eagerly pushing for S.W.O.R.D. to move towards protecting the Earth from space before the snap happened. In the comics, Monica was a bit more grounded when it came to her life's pursuits. That is, before she got her powers. Monica initially was working in the New Orleans police force as a lieutenant for the New Orleans Harbor Patrol, which I think the equivalent in the real world is actually like the New Orleans Harbor Police. It was while on duty that she accepted a request to help out a family friend on an adventure that would end up changing her life and result in her becoming super powered. And in 4, William Marvell. 
William Marvel, also known as Billy Marvel, was the combination of both versions of Captain Marvel from both DC and Marvel in the shared Amalgam Earth. This version of the character shares the powers of both Captain Marvel and Shazam from the DC Universe since originally Shazam was named Captain Marvel. This version of the character was also a member of the Judgment League Avengers and first appeared in JLX number one from 1996. On this Earth, Earth 9602, he's actually a young boy who when shouts the word Kree, transforms into a super scientifically enhanced adult hero. His fellow members of the Judgment League Avengers are not aware of the secret though. After Angel Hawk, Canary, and Goliath found Super Soldier, Captain Marvel soon joined and formed the Judgment League Avengers. He was then transported by Doctor Strange Fate with other members of the Judgment League to battle Thanos side. When Mariner was accused of blowing up oil freighters, and the US government branded him an eco-terrorist and Captain Marvel and other non-meta mutant members of the JLA captured him and imprisoned him without a trial. So kind of a little wishy-washy on the whole morals thing. At number three is the fact that former President Barack Obama is a fan of the character and her comic book series. This may come as expected news due to his close relationship with his two daughters, who were around Kamala Khan's age at the time of Miss Marvel's first appearance. The former president was quoted saying to creator Sana Amanat about her character, Miss Marvel may be your comic book creation, but I think for a lot of young boys and girls, Sana's a real superhero. This quote is pulled from an event in 2016 when Sana was honored at an event that celebrated women's history. And the introductory speaker at the event was President Obama, who included the aforementioned quote in his address. Sana was honored for the creation of Miss Marvel in particular, but also for other progressive work she's done at Marvel Studios. Obama doesn't confirm whether or not he's actually read the comic book, but he does admit to being a comic book fan. It's a pretty wholesome moment and very validating for progressives in the comic book industry, as well as for young girls around the world. Obama tastefully touches on the notion that young comic book fans of Muslim descent and otherwise can now truly have the option to relate directly to this new and impactful character. Penultimately, in at number two, Marvel. Marvel is the Captain Marvel of the Marvel Ultimate Earth, Earth 1610. For millennia, an ancient extraterrestrial race called the Kree have tracked and studied a mysterious planet eating creature they called Galactus. Sounds like a Skyrim shout. The Supreme Intelligence restricted this knowledge to specially trained high level Kree, fearing that if the true nature of Galactus became common knowledge, it would drive their race insane. Several years before Galactus was due to arrive in the Sol system, the Kree staged a covert observation mission on Earth, and Plus Commander Marvel underwent massive nanosurgery to appear human, going undercover as physicist Dr. Philip Lawson to investigate the human race. Growing fond of humans, Vel joined SHIELD's ACES program to speed up humanity's progress of the stars, helping to develop a zero point energy source for manned spaceflight. On the day that the ACES-01 test article was going to be launched, the base was attacked by a Kree kill form with orders for Vel to aid humanities no further. Refusing, Vel just obliterated the kill form, but the effort left him powerless and he was captured by SHIELD. After questioning by General Nick Fury and Captain Carol Danvers, Vel briefed them, the Fantastic Four, Iron Man, and Thor regarding the existence of Galactus and, you know, kind of updated them on the whole situation. Finally, in at number one, actor Marvel. The man who would one day be known as the captain was an ordinary but slightly stupid human from Brooklyn. He spent his life frequenting bars and getting into fights. As a child, his alcoholic mother hung his teddy bear from a noose, so yeah, that would kind of mess you up. However, after gaining his powers and joining the anti-trader group known as Next Wave, the captain would want to change his name. While looking into using the name of Captain Marvel, he actually found out about someone totally different from the Captain Marvel of Earth 616 that we know. Instead, he learned about an adult film star who was using that name. Yes, you heard me right. When trying to use the name of Captain Marvel, the captain came across an adult film actor who was using this name. And honestly, I think that's probably one of the funniest versions of this character that there is. I don't care if it's not Carol Danvers or Marvel, but it's someone going by the name of Captain Marvel making adult movies. Okay, and you know that's gonna be a number one spot for me, hands down. Technically, okay, technically there is an Earth where all the Marvel characters are adult stars. And the MCU is just one big adult film franchise, which I guess would make the Avengers movies giant. Number 10, join
joined the Avengers. Shortly after Monica Rambeau got her powers in the comics, she ended up joining up with Marvel's Avengers. Monica had been looking for someone to help her master and control her powers, which was where the Avengers came in. After being helped out by Iron Man a bit in this department, who began with testing out and monitoring her powers, the Wasp invited Monica, who was known by the name Captain Marvel at the time, to join the team. Monica was floored and happily accepted the offer. The only person who seemed a touch sour about this whole thing was Hawkeye, and that's just because he thought Janet was acting like a super big bossy pants, despite her being the team leader and therefore kind of the boss at the time. Calm down, Hawkeye. Back when Hawkeye apparently had some issues as well with, like, taking orders from ladies. I don't think he, uh... I don't think Clint has that problem now in the comics. Captain Marvel joined the team with an Avenger in training status and was one of the new recruits alongside a fellow powerhouse, She-Hulk. You can read about when Monica first joined the team in Avengers issue 227. Check it out! I don't know why I looked down. I'm just looking at my audio. <laughs> Everyone's probably like, what's Amanda looking at? Just my audio, just watching it go. Number nine, her parents. In the film Captain Marvel, we were introduced to a young Monica Rambeau and Carol's friend and Monica's mother, Maria Rambeau, who in the films, we learn knew Carol from them both being pilots in the Air Force. Despite both Maria and Carol being more than capable pilots, US Air Force restrictions at the time meant that they actually couldn't fly in combat. So instead, they became test pilots for Project Pay. Pegasus, a collaborative project between the organizations of NASA, SHIELD, and of course the Air Force itself, which is probably how they got involved. However, in the comics, Maria is not a pilot at all, but instead works as a very accomplished and in-demand seamstress. Monica herself is from New Orleans, Louisiana in the comics, where she grew up with not just her mother, but her father, who was also there, Frank Rambeau, who was actually a firefighter, so like a hero as well. You can meet Monica's parents in issue 246 of The Avengers, where Monica reveals to her parents that she is actually a superhero, and it's actually really adorable. You should definitely read it. Just good old wholesome fun. Also, I just love when people have like super supportive parents in comics, and I'm like, yay! Number 8. The First Female Captain Marvel Fun fact! Did you know that Monica Rambeau was the first woman to adopt the mantle Captain Marvel? It's true! In the comics, Monica Rambeau made her first appearance in costume in that famed Spider-Man annual, and she was introduced to us as Captain Marvel, a name that previously had only ever been used by the Kree warrior Marvel himself, the very first Captain Marvel in Marvel Comics. Monica would eventually decide to give up this name so that Janice Vell, Marvel's son, could actually take it on, but only after using the name herself for well over 10 years. Janice Vell would also then steal her next moniker as well, by the way. In fact, in terms of superhero identities, Captain Marvel is the name Monica has used the longest in comparison to any of her other mantles. So she's like, kind of the real Captain Marvel. Other than Marvel, I guess. But he dead right now, so yeah. And at seven, Phyla Vell. After Janice Vell, then known as Captain Marvel, previously destroyed and recreated the universe, the new version was subtly altered with Phyla Vell's existence being one of the changes. Phyla Vell was the second artificially created offspring of Captain Marvel, who was created by her mother Elysius in the new universe because her first attempt, Janice Vell, had been so successful. She fought her brother, who was insane at the time, and in the process of helping to restore his sanity, she then tried to claim the Captain Marvel title, though her brother refused to give it up. To save Rick Jones' girlfriend, Marlo Chandler, Jenna's had to travel to the future to see what would be the cause of her future demise. He asked Phyla to stay behind on Earth to keep watch over Marlo, and in doing so, she encountered the being known as Magus, who tried to kidnap Marlo. She and the telepath Moondragon foiled the plot, and Jenna's returned to Earth shortly after, telling her that he stopped a villainous plan to release Magus hundreds of years in the future, but wouldn't expect explain how. But like, bro, I just fought him. Couldn't you have done that a little sooner? Number 6. Created by... Monica Rambeau was a character created by John Romita Jr. and Roger Stern. Initially, when it came to her look, Romita intended to use actress Pam Greer as a model for the character they were building. 
but Marvel Editorial didn't agree with that look for the character and insisted on a different model. While the look of the character moved further and further away from that original inspiration, Monica still has kept a lot of the action-packed, badass feel of the actress who inspired her. Pam Greer has been referred to by Quentin Tarantino as cinema's first female action star. Greer is best known for her body of work in the 70s, where she starred in a ton of action films, including Foxy Brown. In Tarantino's 1997 film Jackie Brown, Pam Greer starred as the titular character and actually received many award nominations for her performance, including a nomination for a Golden Globe. Sadly, I don't think she won the Golden Globe though, but... Still, being nominated for a Golden Globe is amazing. And very fittingly at number five is the fact that Miss Marvel is one of the founding members of the Champions. When she leaves the Avengers, she reforms an old team of heroes that had a brief run in the 1970s. But in 2016, the first issue of a new Champions volume comes out and it fables the story of Miss Marvel and a few other ex-Avengers coming together to form the group. They also set out to reform some of the missing ideals from their former mentors in the Avengers. It turns Turns out that Kamala has the same issues with the Avengers moral compass as her counterparts Nova and Spider-Man because they set out to value the lives of average people more than their predecessors. This story is pretty thematically rich, giving the reader the notion that it's up to young people to reassess the behaviors set forth by the older generations and try and find ways to improve them. Even when those elders are such impactful heroes as Iron Man and Captain America, there's always work to be done to be better. And that's a great message to send to young audiences. Number four, Blue Marvel. After her time serving alongside the main Marvel Avengers team and the organization Hate, a team dedicated to eradicating terrorist groups, Monica ended up on the Mighty Avengers team and started a romance with fellow team member Blue Marvel. The Mighty Avengers banded together as a result of the main Avengers team being off planet during the events of Infinity, when on Earth, Thanos actually returned along with his Black Order. Oh no! Mighty Avengers, assemble. During this instigation, Monica found her life threatened after being exposed to the effects of Proxima Midnight's spear. Blue Marvel was able to help save Monica's life, but discovered that as a result of this event, her powers actually had been affected. The two became close with Blue Marvel Adam Brashear, who is also kind of part of the Captain Marvel family of heroes, helping Monica to learn more about her powers and how they affected her genetic makeup. While romantically involved, they realized that the power up Monica had received transformed her into basically a cosmic immortal being. Wow! Speaking of cosmic immortal beings... Getting close to the end in number 3, MCU Captain Marvel. Carol Danvers is depicted as a former US Air Force fighter pilot who was given superhuman abilities when a light speed engine test went wrong and she was exposed to the cosmic energy of the Tesseract and subsequently transformed into a human Kree hybrid known as Veers via blood transfusion. In 1995 on the Kree Empire's capital planet of Hala, Danvers, then known as Vers, suffered from amnesia and recurring nightmares involving an older woman particularly as a former Air Force test pilot who acquired cosmic energy force powers from the Tesseract after an explosion that wiped her memory. So, um, you can kind of see where that was going. But, I'm including this version of Captain Marvel not because she's weird, but because, for some reason, everyone seemingly hates this version. So much so, that when I mentioned how the MCU Captain Marvel could beat the MCU Hulk, since MCU Thanos beat him and she was going to beat MCU Thanos, without, if he didn't have the Power Stone at least, everyone still got mad at me. And I, they some still hate me to this day. You should have seen my DMs after that video went out. And still, sometimes I get messages about how these some of these fans hate me, okay? All because of my literal second video on the channel. And that's the reason I included this, so I can finally say my piece. Redemption is finally mine! Number two, many different names. As I alluded to earlier, Monica Rambeau hasn't just been known by the name Captain Marvel. That was simply her first superhero codename. Currently, she is known in the comics by the heroic mantle of Spectrum, but she's had a few other names as well. Other than Captain Marvel, though, none have stuck around for quite as long as that first name. After Captain Marvel, Monica took up the mantle Photon, likely the one we'll see her use in the MCU in honor of her mother, Maria Photon Rambeau. 
She held that mantle for just over nine years in the comics before becoming known as Pulsar in around 2005, and then finally moving to her current name, Spectrum, around 2013. Number one, leader of the Avengers. That's right, Monica Rambeau wasn't just the first person to take up the mantle of Captain Marvel after the man Marvel himself, she also ended up becoming the leader of the freaking Avengers. This happened after the Masters of Evil were defeated in issue 279. Wasp had been leading and she was looking for a much needed break. Monica herself thought Captain America would be a good replacement, but he in turn actually nominated Monica, feeling he was too busy with just other priorities to lead at the time. Almost everyone else agreed that Monica was pretty much the best pick, and so Captain Marvel became the Avengers leader. Monica would lead until she became injured in issue 294 and was replaced as a leader by the sinister Dr. Druid. Dun dun dun. Fortunately, Druid's manipulations would be uncovered and he would soon be exposed for the true villain that he was. He deserved it too. Monica was literally injured and he like implanted in her mind that she should nominate him. No, no, no. All right, at number 10 is that she is different from Captain Marvel. I know many of you already know this, but we gotta throw in an entry for the dabblers. Those who only dabble in superhero culture may confuse these two characters for obvious reasons, but the two are very different, although this isn't an accident. The original handle of Miss Marvel was taken on by Carol Danvers way back in 1977 in Miss Marvel issue number one. Later going by the monikers of Binary, then Warbird, Danvers finally takes on the name of her mentor and goes by Captain Marvel in 2012. And when Kamala Khan, the current Miss Marvel, appears in 2014, she takes up the Miss Marvel moniker as an homage to Carol Danvers. This is because Kamala herself is a fan of superheroes. This is because Kamala herself is a fan of superheroes, which we'll talk about later. On top of all this, the powers between the two heroes are also entirely different as well as their personalities and their ages. But we'll also get to those details in the entries coming up. But yes, two different characters. It's a little confusing, but that's the gist of it. At number nine is the fact that Miss Marvel, aka Kamala Khan, is in high school. It isn't often that a superhero is as young as Kamala Khan. So, in the superhero world, Kamala Khan is very young, and it shows in her personality, her often being easily excitable and energetic in battle. But this choice to make her a high school student wasn't drawn out of a hat by any means. By creating a younger character like Kamala, writers were hoping to capture the attention of young readers who would relate to her everyday experiences. Being part of the Marvel Now era, this wasn't as unusual as it typically might be, with Marvel moving forward with a wave of new age interpretations of old stories in 2012. These changes moved to modernize some of the increasingly outdated storylines and themes as well as artwork that also got a makeover. So it was the perfect time to include a fresh new character like Khan to the canon. At number eight is the simple fact that Miss Marvel has a number of different powers. Honestly, her power set is so vast that it's hard to tell what powers Kamala doesn't have. The original Miss Marvel was super powerful, but her power set was pretty straightforward. She had flight, super strength, and the ability to fire energy blasts on command. She was very powerful, don't get me wrong, but Miss Marvel's got a much more varied set of abilities that puts many heroes to shame. Her primary power is her ability to embiggen parts of her body at will, as well as shrink down to any size she wants on command. She's also able to stretch like Mr. Fantastic, so that means that so far she's got powers similar to those of Ant-Man and Mr. Fantastic. But on top of all that, she's also got the healing factor that makes Wolverine stand out from his counterparts. The only thing she needs to focus on now is her strategy and focus, something that I think we can all agree just simply comes with age. Number seven, first team up. Her first team up started like so many have in the past with some confusion that ultimately led to a fight between the two heroes teaming up. Of course, this team up was with none other than Spider-Man. When Monica first arrived in New York, Spider-Man came across her and sensed danger, thinking, 
she might be in danger, he decided to follow her. It was also kind of creepy that he followed her in the way he phrases it. But anyways, Monica ended up having to fight off a couple of thieves who tried to steal her purse and was therefore in a very defensive mindset when Spider-Man reached out to compliment her handiwork, having witnessed the fight. Also Spider-Man, just you probably shouldn't like touch people after they've just been in a fight, just a suggestion. Instinctively, Mona reacted by blasting him without looking. His spidey sense didn't see that one coming. It was only after she had reactively attacked that she noticed, oh my goodness, he's Spider-Man. Oops. And then she's just like, he's probably fine. I gotta keep going. <laughs> Bye, Spider-Man. <laughs> I just love that. And friends, before I move on to our next spot, if you are enjoying this list and you want more like it highlighting some of these uh, side characters who are going to be like propelled into the spotlight even more with, of course, their involvement in the MCU, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Also, it really does help us out here at the channel. So thank you for the engagement. At number six is the fact that Miss Marvel is one of the youngest members to ever join the Avengers. For those who aren't already aware, Miss Marvel is in fact given a membership to the Avengers after the Secret Wars event. And she finds herself starstruck once again, fighting alongside the likes of Iron Man, Thor, Vision, and Captain America. There are some members younger than her in the Young Avengers, but we're not talking about them. The Young Avengers are great, but... This is the real deal, the Avengers. Understandably, she also appears to be the only one on the team who looks surprised that she's even there, constantly in a state of excitement and shock as she lives out her biggest dream. But it's not just a dream she's living out, she actually holds her own really well with the rest of the team with her massive power set described earlier. It's pretty fun to watch, but it sadly comes to an end as quickly as it began at the start of Civil War II. However, this isn't the end of her time teaming up with other superheroes. She quickly quickly goes on to help found the champions and continues to thrive among a new set of superhero peers. Halfway through into number 5, Jenna's Veil. After a falling out with Captain America, Rick Jones found himself mentally drawn to a pair of extraterrestrial golden bracelets, the Nega Bands. Donning the bands, Rick slammed his wrists together with all of his might and his atoms traded places with those of the exiled Kree Captain Marvel. Joined together, Rick and Captain Marvel lived a shared existence. During the epic Kree Skrull War, Rick and Captain Marvel became pawns of the Kree Supreme Intelligence who unleashed the untapped psionic potential of Rick's mind, the Destiny Force, to put an end to the war. Sometime later though, as a result of the exposure to deadly nerve gas, Captain Marvel perished from incurable systemic cancer. As Rick slowly began to move on with his life, eventually getting married, Marvel's love, Elysius, felt more alone than ever. Using Titanian science, Elysius sampled some of Marvel's genetic structure to conceive a child, Genis. To protect him from Captain in Marvel's enemies. Genis was artificially aged to maturity and taken to an isolated world where he would be safe from harm. Upon discovering of his true lineage though, Genis donned wristlets modeled after the Nega bands worn by his father and was determined to carry on his father's heroic tradition, eventually calling himself Captain Marvel. At number 4 is the fact that Miss Marvel is an inhuman. Many people don't realize this, but Kamala Khan is actually part of a race of superpowered people called Inhumans, which includes the likes of Black Bolt and Triton. Just to name a couple. Her initial hopes are that she'll turn out to be a mutant, her being such a big fan of the X-Men. But instead, she finds herself with origins that puts her alongside some of the most powerful superheroes in the Marvel Universe. Some people online believe that this was a decision by Marvel that was only made because they sold the rights to X-Men to 20th Century Fox in 1993. Many believe that if the rights to X-Men were still in Marvel's ownership, Miss Marvel would have most definitely been considered a mutant. But that's all hearsay. It doesn't matter too much because firstly, the Inhumans are also really cool, and secondly, Miss Marvel mainly focuses on her Muslim American heritage anyway. It's proven to be a more impactful and interesting angle to Miss Marvel's character that she's a young Pakistani American, so her background as an Inhuman sometimes gets lost in the mix. But if you didn't know before, now you know. Number three, her powers are impressive. If you've ever wondered who some of the fastest Avengers are, Monica would definitely be among them. Her powers allow her to manipulate, absorb directly, and transform into different types of energy. This grants her the ability of flight and also means she can move and react at the speed of sound or of light, depending which energy form she takes. She can manipulate light to alter her appearance and even use this ability to impersonate other people. So this really is only a light 
construct, a visual construct, and does not result in any solid changes being made to her makeup or her biology. In many of her different energy forms, she can also become invisible and has also been said to have a cosmic level of awareness or sensitivity due to her being more energy now than human, really, even in her neutral state. Her power is having changed her own senses, basically. There was also a time when Monica, like, kind of became a little more depowered to, like, turn down how OP she was. But, uh, yeah, she's really OP now, which is great. At number two is the fact that the comic book series Miss Marvel was actually expected to fail. And this wasn't just expected by critics, but by the writer herself. G. Willow Wilson, the head writer of Miss Marvel, was quoted saying explicitly that, quote, a series like this was, by the superhero industry math of the time, doomed to fail. It was the trifecta of death. New characters don't sell, female characters don't sell, minority characters don't sell. Her words, not mine. But this may come as a surprise to many readers of this series and even viewers of this video right now, considering the series and the character of Kamala Khan have gone on to be a story of mass success. But to Wilson's point, back in 2014, despite it only being eight years ago when the Miss Marvel series was first released, the social climate was quite a bit less liberal than it is today. So Wilson wasn't messing around when she suspected the series would fail. It really did have a lot going against it, at least in the data. But sometimes there's a cultural pocket that opens up without most of us realizing it, which allows things that would normally be rejected to be accepted with open arms by the people of the world. And it seems as though this was one of those instances. And we're glad that that happened because now we get to make lists about one more awesome superhero in the Marvel canon. It's a win-win all around. Finally, at number one is the fact that Miss Marvel, aka Kamala Khan, is the first Muslim character to headline a Marvel publication male or female. Upon the release of Miss Marvel issue 1, 2014 was the first year that Marvel opened up to a whole new community of readers who could relate to the struggles and also the triumphs of a Muslim American superhero. Sana Amnat, the original creator of the Miss Marvel character, was quoted saying she wanted to, quote, explore the Muslim American diaspora from an authentic perspective. And she does just that. Although Kamala Khan's religion is part of her identity, Aminat and the head writer G. Willow Wilson have also made it clear that they don't want Miss Marvel to be an Islamic story because they don't want to alienate any readers by making the character's experience too specific to one group. Another interesting angle of this character is that she's from New Jersey, which is situated right outside of New York City. And this is considered to be a conscious decision to explore other angles of the typical superhero origin story. Not everyone's from New York City, and now the rent is pretty high there, and, and these days it takes more than delivering a few pizzas to pay it off. And that's directed at you, Peter Parker. You did nothing wrong, but for some reason I'm zeroing in on you. Yeah.